Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this one, I'm going to show you how to pick your very first winning product for 2024. So when it comes to starting and scaling a successful dropshipping business, by far the hardest thing to do is get that initial success with a product. And it's usually because most people are beginners when it comes to e-commerce and they're not necessarily familiar with what goes into selecting and picking a winning product. It's definitely a skill and not an art. So one thing I did to help myself with the whole selection process, I mean, I've been doing this for seven years now, so I have a pretty decent idea when I see a product, whether I think it can be successful or not. However, there's always gonna be things that I sometimes forget to consider in a product. So I decided to kind of take any guesswork out of the equation so that every time I find a product, I have something very black and white, or in this case, green, red, or yellow to compare it against. It's a brilliant tool for helping me compare products against one another. It's also a tool I developed for members of my mentorship program just to help speed up the process and again, take any kind of guesswork out of the product selection process. So I have a product to go through with you today. It's the products on AliExpress here. It's a reflective rain jacket for a dog. It's a brilliant, brilliant product. At least I think so. However, we're gonna put it to the test and put it into the product research checklist. So the way this checklist works is you insert your product. On the left-hand side is a bunch of different pieces of criteria and you go through them one by one answering the criteria. Is it hard to find in stores? Yes, it goes green. It's a positive point. Green is good. Yellow is okay, but not a deal breaker. And red is bad, needs to be fixed before we proceed. So the idea of this video then is to take you through my way of thinking when it comes to deciding whether or not to move forwards with a product. I'm not gonna show you in this video how to find the products because I feel like that's pretty straightforward nowadays. There's so many different softwares out there, but perhaps if you'd like my input on that area of the product research and product selection process, then make sure you leave a comment down below and I can get that done for you guys, no problem. If you're interested in getting your hands on this tool and you wanna be part of the mentorship and work with me on a one-to-one -one basis, um, I'll give you the information at the end. It is quite an exclusive mentorship. I only work with five people every single month. I think I've got two, maybe another spot coming up on Monday. So if you want more information on that, basically just stay tuned until the end. So let's begin. We have the waterproof reflective jacket. I'm not gonna bother wasting your guys' time watching me copy and paste links in. It's important to have the links there just so you always have access to the information and the supplier info. Is it hard to find in stores? So this checklist has been built around the fact that, and this is something I recommend for everybody I work with, is that we work to find a niche that has some kind of connection to the person I'm working with. It's no good me advising somebody like myself to go out there and sell hair curlers when they don't have long hair, when they don't use hair curlers, because the chances are they don't spend many times or much time on websites or blogs or in shops looking at the hair curler section and therefore they're probably not familiar with what's actually out there. Because I have a dog, a large dog that suffers with, not suffers, I'm the one that suffer. When I take him out on a walk in the winter, it gets wet and muddy, then I know what the pain points are and that's why it gives me an advantage or a leg up I suppose when it comes to selecting products. So. Is it hard to find in stores? Yes, I've never seen this product in pets at home or any kind of supermarket or department store here in the UK. So I know it's not the kind of thing that people will be able to purchase from their local store. It'll be something new they probably haven't seen before. Does it meet Facebook policy? As long as you're not selling anything like to promote anything dodgy or tobacco related products or alcohol or ammunitions, that sort of thing, drugs, obviously, then you're usually pretty, pretty good to go. Is there fast shipping available? So this is an old school point, actually, maybe a little bit outdated. I now work with an agent um, who can deliver to the UK in less than a week. I would consider fast shipping, drop shipping wise, anything less than a week is absolutely brilliant. It's definitely good enough to build a drop shipping business off of. Remember, dropshipping is just a proof of concept. Once you have established a business, built a brand, got some traction, and you know you can sell a product, then 
it doesn't make any sense to consider drop shipping for any length of time. You should then be looking to private label the product, get some stock in your local country and do it that way. Shipping times increase, profitability increases, customer satisfaction increases, quality of the product is controlled a lot more. There's just so many benefits to progressing on from drop shipping. Does the product solve a problem? This product definitely solves a problem. Not only does it keep your dog safe in the dark because any light that hits the jacket um, illuminates it and it also keeps your dog drier. Is the product unique? I would say it's pretty unique. It's not like a pair of shoes um, that there's loads and loads of different options out there. There's not many waterproof reflective jackets out there for your pets. I think it's pretty safe to say. Is there a specific audience? This one's super important. Um, I'm going to use watches as an example. If you just try and sell like a really just generic watch, it's going to be really difficult to kind of get somebody excited enough about it to actually warrant handing over their money to buy it. Somebody needs to be passionate and want your product in order to buy it. It's a difficult one to explain, but so right let's put it like this we have a generic watch that has no particular kind of unique features to it then we have a watch that has horse designs that is it's got a horse in the middle of it um, it's got horse hooves it's aimed at kids and it's a, people who love horses basically it's aimed at those sorts of people you can have so much more success targeting people who are passionate about certain subjects and in your product being part of that subject part of that niche then you are trying to sell a really boring bland generic watch to absolutely everyone the more involved and interested and passionate somebody is about your product then the better chance you have of getting eyeballs on it getting traction on social media and therefore selling it a really boring bland product is you're always going to struggle to do that is the ideal customer 50 plus and female um, i'm going to say yes it is the reason why this is in there is because i've been doing this for seven years now and that's seven full years on facebook these by far it pretty much hasn't well it hasn't changed if anything it's maybe got a little bit older um, but females over the age of 50 are definitely the strongest buyers on facebook we might even get a home run on this product hard to guess the price hmm, i think we've just fell over, fallen over at the first hurdle I'm not going to say yes, it is hard to guess the price. And um, with products like this, it typically is because there's a lot of technology involved. However, with a jacket that's just one or two bits of material, bit of stitching, nobody's going to wonder whether this costs £5 to make or £50 to make or £100 to make. I think it's, it's relatively simple um, to kind of ballpark numbers for it. Is it a safe product? It is. There's no like small moving parts that can be choked on or there's no like liquids or consumables and um, nothing like that. Ships from local country. This is something I would have to check. I don't know of anyone off the top of my head that could supply this for me. We definitely get it from China. Everything's made in China, but this is something I would actually have to check. So I'm going to put a no for now. Is it affordable shipping? Yes, it will be because it's a jacket. It's lightweight. It's small. It could be packed up into a tight package. And is it absent on Amazon? So let's go ahead and check this one. So I've gone ahead and put in reflective rain coat for a dog. And what I'm looking for is, so this is very similar, but it's got a hood on it. And there's no actual like for like, which is a really positive sign because there will be a select few customers that see your ad. Is it absent on Amazon? It is. There will be some people who see your ad and think, oh, I'm going to go to Amazon, try and buy it. And if they don't see a like for like exact copy of your product, then it increases the chances ever so slightly. They might see something similar on Amazon and think I'm going to go for them. However, if they can't find a like for like, it may just tip them over the edge to coming back and buying from you. So all in all, not bad. There's that one thing that we need to check and who knows, that could even become green. I then like to verify the engagements. So the shares, the comments, engagements, positive comments, recent comments on Dropper Spy slash Minia. They're both very similar tools. They both do a very similar thing. I've detailed this numerous times in different videos. Basically, I find an ad for the product on Facebook. I look at what people are saying about it and you can input numbers into this. And then it's going to tell you whether that's a good amount or not to warrant it being considered a kind of verified or proven winner. Trending validation then. So this is basically where we check it on Google Trends to see if it's the sort of thing people are looking for. 
at the moment. So let's jump on to Google Trends. Okay, so using Google Trends, there's a couple of things we need to point out here. Number one is nobody's gonna be looking for products that they don't know exists. So it's not necessarily gonna be, so that's why I've taken the word basically reflective out of it. Whereas dog coat is a much more kind of broader term that people are going to be looking for. People also, people would also search for dog jackets. So I've put that in and they both pretty much follow each other anyway. What we can see is there's kind of like it starts in September when it starts going up and it reaches kind of like a peak in November, December time. Um, or at least in those kind of uh, those final three months of the year. What we can see here is that January 2024 it's actually on its way down. So it's a product that is currently coming out of trend. So should we avoid it entirely? So this is where at this point of view, I would actually say no, because even though we're on a downward trend, we're still quite high up in the search volumes. Also being based in the UK, knowing the weather, then there can always be a rainy day, even in summer. So it's the sort of thing that if people did see, or well, we'd still get at least another two or three months out of selling this product. And it's still the sort of thing that somebody might choose to invest in just for that one off time where they do get caught um, in a downfall. So I would still consider this relatively popular or relatively in demand for what people are looking for. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this just so we know that it's not a complete home run and we're not at the beginning of a booming market. This should calculate automatically. I need to check that, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is a very good score considering we haven't counted any of these. Last but not least, profitability. At the end of the day, numbers talk. If we cannot make it work, then we must leave it anyway. We need to make sure there's enough room in there for profitability. So the unit cost is 739 with free shipping over 940. So I'm gonna guess shipping here so you don't have to watch me thumble around um, AliExpress. Let's go for, let's just call it 10 pounds all in. I'm very, very confident that we can source that for $10. That includes shipping. So total cost delivered is $10 retail price. I know for a fact you could sell something like this, especially for a larger dog breed for like $40, I reckon, which gives us a $30 profit margin, which as you can see highlighted in green is a very good profit margin. Even if we had to bump it down to say 35, it still gives us a fairly decent one. I try and work on a minimum of 20, but anything over 30 um, is brilliant. Just to it's kind of um, just reminding me, if we go back to the specific audience here, um, I don't think I touched on that at the point. What I mean by specific audience is that with products like this, yes, it's for dogs, but there's even something more specific. You can drill down even further into dogs for this. So the product, you have to consider the pain points that's gonna solve. So number one, it's gonna solve the issue for those dogs that run off all the time, um, are in danger of getting ran over. It's gonna solve the problem, the pain points for people who work a nine to five. So they either have to get up early in the winter and walk their dog or walk their dog after work, both cases in which they'll be walking their dog in the dark. So there's two pain points. And number three, it's gonna keep their dog dry. So you wanna be targeting long haired dogs, regardless of what size it is. It's gonna be long haired dogs that hold more water and hold more dirt. And they're gonna be your specific target market. So you could target, say the German Shepherds or the Great Danes or whatever it may be. And so with that being said then guys, that is it for today's video. Hopefully you found that valuable. If you did, make sure you drop a like on the video. Any questions, follow up questions, just post them down below. I read every single one, so I will get back to you. Um, and finally then, as promised, if you are interested in becoming Come and joining my mentorship program and working with me on a one-to-one -one basis, then I'm going to invite you to jump on a call with me. So the reason I put this message at the end of the video is because I don't want every man and his dog booking in a call with me. It's going to waste my time. I want to work with people who are serious and I mean proper serious. They're going to be proactive about building their business. They're ready to go all in and build a legitimate dropshipping business that can change their lives for the better. If you are one of those people that hops from shiny thing to shiny thing and one week it's dropshipping, the next week it's crypto, 
then you're not the kind of person I want to work with if I'm being honest. So I politely ask you not to book in um, in my calendar. If you are somebody who loves dropshipping and the freedoms it provides and you're ready to make this work for yourself, then you are the type of person I want to work with and you are the type of person I want to speak with. So what you need to do, if that sounds good to you, is just below this video, open up the description of it and you'll find this secret link at the bottom. If you go ahead and click that, it's going to take you to a short application process. It's a series of six or seven questions. The questions are there for a couple of reasons. Number one is to filter out the lazy people who can't be bothered to do it because they're obviously not serious about this. Um, and also number two, it's there for me to get an idea of where you are at the moment, where you want to be in the next kind of two to three months time so I can get an idea of what your goals are um, and then we can jump on a call and we can have that discussion see if we click um, and ultimately see if I can be the person to help you achieve those goals so if that sounds good to you head over there now get that filled out find a date and time that suits you and I'll see you there thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one